When you hear the word troll, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Does your imagination immediately slip to the online prankster trying to get a laugh at someone else's ignorance? Do you think of a little green smug amphibian or some other ambiguous online tune with seeming inside jokes and hidden agendas? And what of the folkloric troll? What of the hairy cave dweller of ancient myth living on the outskirts of society or under a secluded bridge just waiting solivitously to gobble up the next baby goat crossing overhead or any other number of hapless victims? In the 21st century, information may zip around the world with light speeds, but is there still any room left for myth? Could Bigfoot or some other undiscovered simian truly be living deep in some uncharted area of the world, just waiting for the uncaring claws of humanity to close in and rip away from it the only home it has ever known? Or have we already seen all there is to see, and now we are only left with no more wonder in the world, all dragons gone extinct, all unicorns sold at the auction, and readied for the glue factory? Good evening, friends. I am your host, Mask, and you are watching Connect the Dots. I still recall with fond memories playing Dungeons and Dragons with my friends as a youth. I loved transporting my mind to these mythical realms, strange and fantastic. The idea of exploring dark caves and dusty old catacombs full of ancient treasure guarded by creatures foul and formidable was almost always an enticing one. One of the most ornery and vile creatures of all you could possibly ever encounter was the troll. Not only was your average run-of-the-mill troll powerful, able to attack three times in one combat turn with two claws and a bite, delivering up to 28 points of damage. It was also tough. Its armor class was only 4, which was incredibly average, but its hit dice was 6 plus 6, which lent it up to a grand total of 42 hit points, or health. What's more, it regenerated 3 hit points per round. And if you managed to bring this monster down to zero, you would still have to burn its carcass to ash or dissolve it in acid to prevent it from coming back. Most characters didn't readily have acid, you see, so the most common way of dispatching these things was with fire. Now that I think about it, I wonder what would have happened if someone would have eaten one. As a dungeon master, I've always wanted to put a spin on the creatures offered up by the Monster Manual, something to keep my players guessing. Often I might research the real life myths of these monsters to get a better feel for them and to see how they fit into the modern game by understanding their origins. The troll, it seems, has Nordic and Scandinavian roots. The word itself began popping up in the early 1600s and gained much popularity once adopted into the English language during the 1800s when the term was used to denote an entire spectrum of fair folk from giants to elves, beings that should be respected and feared. Their appearance has varied greatly from tale to tale. While often described as ugly and dim-witted, some sources say they resembled any other human some actually reported them as beautiful beings, as in the story of Pierre Ghent, whom fell in love with the Mountain King's daughter and nearly became a troll himself just to be with her. They seemed also to have had the power of shape-shifting, like the werewolf, who may also have been classified as a troll according to folklore. Other tales speak of human babies being switched out at birth with troll babies called changelings. These children were often gifted or deformed by some human measure, most likely having a medical condition their community knew little about. In addition to these things, trolls were almost always specifically noted to be non-Christian, and if you knew the name of one, you might have power over it. 
So what does any of this really have to do with the true origins of the troll? When we seem to be at a place on this subject where the smoke is so thick, is it possible to see or at least guess where the fire is really coming from? Perhaps it is merely a merging of many local legends into one classification of being, then used as sort of a go-to word people could use to describe something they didn't quite understand, but made their minds wander to strange places. The mentioning of them being non-Christian could theoretically indicate that Christians of the time may have had run-ins with backwards, uncivilized, and possibly incestuous folk still living in the woods or hills. Combined with the furs and headdresses of animals like bears and deer, I could conceive that the village dweller would look onto this person as a supernatural being. But what if they saw something else? What if they did happen to catch a glimpse of something inhuman living on the outskirts of their society? There have been cases all over the world where people reported seeing huge furry man-like creatures living in the wilderness. These beasts have been called Yeti and Sasquatch, and seem to exhibit many of the same traits of the folkloric troll. Could it be possible that actual trolls are alive and thriving out there, somewhere even to this very day? Recently, you may have come across a video showing what appears to be some sort of horn-playing primates wading waist-deep in waters off the coast of Thailand. The Che Na men are an Ewok-like race of trolls that live in the crabby cave off the coast of Thailand. They are short and furry with webbed feet and seem to exhibit a sense of culture when captured on film by tourists while performing some strange musical ritual. The earliest upload of this I could find is from November 3rd, 2018, and though at the time many were convinced that these were real ancient and undiscovered creatures finally deciding to come out into the light of the modern world. It would soon be revealed that this was only a performance art piece, set up by artist Tori Raines. Behind the scenes photos and clips were posted to her Instagram account, revealing how the magic was made. Yet this did not stop Flat Earther, Kenanigan 2.0. Conspiracy theorist YouTuber, if you want to put me in that quick category. From claiming that this was only a cover-up story. That the original video had been seized by the government. We actually had a, um, a disinformation campaign going on for the footage, which I will prove. And that Reigns had been hired to make the video and take credit in order to hide the truth. You could tell that's a human in a costume. Uh, you know, it, it looks like a basic you know, mascot costume suit, right? See the one sitting over here with the legs bent and he has frog looking legs? They're not the same legs. It gets even more weird. There's mockery right in our face. Could the Thailand government possibly be hiding something? Could they really be hiding ritualistic horn playing monkey trolls? In the video Strange Aquatic Humanoids filmed in Thailand, he aptly points out much of the mockery aimed at us by the Illuminati. How much they mock us with Ewoks. Now, you'll notice the mockery right there. Ewok like troll monkeys. How much they mock us with Yoda, the Lizard King. This is why they called Yoda the uh, reptilian that the Freemason worshipped. That's why they put him in Star Wars. Because anyone who ever mentioned Yoda after that would be mocked. How much they mock us with giant stone gorilla heads. Does that not look like a mud fossil of a gorilla's head right there? You see that? mockery right in your face. The evidence is quite overpowering. The other thing, why do these people have British accents? Yeah, think about that one. So you're gonna hear music playing in the clip. Well, guess what? It is these creatures who are actually playing the music. The fact that they're using the name closest relatives... Think about that one. Let that one sink in. Okay, I can't do this anymore. If there were undiscovered primates living there, then how come no one has ever photographed them until now? I find it hard to believe that these creatures would simply come out to greet all the camera holding tourists one day, completely unafraid and uncaring that their sacred ritual might be interrupted by creatures strange to them. Any animal in the wild knows when to and when not to come out. And this certainly wasn't the time. Surely these creatures would be much smarter than that. 
And what of Kenanigan? What of other ultra conspiracy theorists? I used to love a good conspiracy back in the day, but because of some of the overwhelming bullshittery I've seen in recent years online, it's been enough to drive me away from the scene. I often wonder if some of these people actually believe what they are saying. This footage was taken in Thailand. The local Thailand people call them Shane, which means um, Shane in Viet, uh, Thailand, I believe it means waterman. Basically, these are aquatic creatures that live in a cave off a cove of the ocean. Or are they only there to rally fools together with the agenda of delegitimatizing the subject? Could Kanenigan actually be the one trolling? A sort of troll inception? A trollception? He states that Che Na is Thai for Waterman, and I call bullshit. I don't know where he is getting his info from, but when I use Google Translate, it gives me this. Pronounced Kunam. Could this be a corruption of the word? Could he be far reaching? Or could Che Na Men be a play on the phrase Chinaman? As suggested by Snopes.com, I'll let you be the judge of all that. I'll provide plenty of useful links in the description if you would like to investigate further. The concept of the troll has probably been around as long as we've walked the earth, as long as we've seen shadows out of the corners of our eyes, or had we green folk dancing and molesting us during our sleep paralysis. As times change, so does our language and the perception of our reality, once used to denote an entire class of magical beings. The word now is used more and more to represent specifically the ugly goblinoid living under the goat bridge or hiding below in the comments section. By using it in literature and in cinema, in tabletop and video games, and as well by using it as online slang, we will ensure that this being will only become more and more concrete in its mythical canon. Though trolls may be the stuff of myths and legends, if I were you, I'd leave the night light on tonight before you go to sleep. Close the closet door and look under the bed before you say your prayers. Do these things just in case. I have been your host this evening, Mask. Thank you for watching and sweet dreams. Thank <laughs> you.